Meet Karl Lutz, the Swiss diplomat who saved half the Jewish population of Budapest. Before Lutz became one of the most well-known saviors of the Jews in World War II, he was born in the Appenzell Mountains of Switzerland in 1895. At the turn of the century, Lutz enjoyed a modest upbringing with his father owning the local quarry. One year after his mother died from tuberculosis in 1909, Lutz began working as an apprentice in a nearby textile mill, but this would only last for a mere three years before Lutz's life would take a very different path. To understand why Lutz was how he was, it's important to examine his upbringing. Born into a traditional Methodist family, Lutz developed many of the characteristics that would lead him into the Swiss diplomatic service later in life. According to historian Xavier Cornut, he was a typical Swiss, introverted, serious, but paradoxically also an adventurer with a great sense of initiative. This mixture of ethical values and entrepreneurial spirit explains why he had the courage, but also the intellectual sophistication to build such a comprehensive protection system in the heart of a dangerous country like Hungary. Prior to entering the diplomatic service, Lutz emigrated to the United States in 1913 at the age of 18. He would work for five years in Granite City, Illinois, to earn enough money to attend college in Warrenton, Missouri. After finishing the first phase of his studies in 1920, Lutz immediately found work in the Swiss legation as he continued his education at George Washington University. In 1924, he graduated with his bachelor's degree, which prepared him for the diplomatic path. By 1926, Lutz was the chancellor of the Swiss consulate in Philadelphia before he was moved to St. Louis, Missouri. He would remain in these two positions until 1935, when he would be reassigned to the Swiss consulate general in Palestine, which was under British control at the time. Again, Lutz would serve in his position with distinction, largely shielded from the affairs of Europe as the Axis powers rose and the shadow of war loomed large over the continent. It was also a particularly difficult time for Switzerland as a country since it was forced into being a delicate fulcrum between the allied powers of Britain and France and the Axis powers of Germany and Italy. In 1942, Lutz's life would change forever as he would be appointed vice consul for Switzerland in Budapest, the capital of Nazi Germany's ally Hungary. At this time, the Axis still reigned supreme over the vast majority of the continent, with the tide yet to turn against them. It was also a period where although many Jews were under relentless persecution, the full industrial might of the final solution had yet to be brought to bear. Furthermore, unlike the occupied countries of the Third Reich, Hungary resisted mass deportations of its Jews to the death camps, but it was clear the executioner's axe still loomed large over the Jews. Yet even before the deportations began, Lutz began cooperating with the Jewish Agency for Palestine. During this two-year period, Lutz issued nearly 10,000 safe conduct papers that allowed Hungarian Jewish children to emigrate to Palestine. Remember, although Lutz represented Switzerland in Hungary, he also represented British interests and therefore the British mandate in Palestine. This unique position put him in the perfect place to help the Jewish population of Budapest. However, this luxurious position for Hungary's Jews would not last. Fearful that Hungary was preparing to defect away from Germany, the country was occupied in March 1944, as the war crawled closer and closer to the heart of the Reich. As in Italy, German troops oversaw the country and ousted its previous rulers. Now there were no protections for the Hungarian Jews, and Germany wasted no time. In March 1944, the Germans began deporting Jews to the death camps. It should be noted that Lutz still made several desperate attempts to persuade the Hungarians to halt the deportations, but it was all in vain. Instead, Lutz was empowered to issue 8,000 documents for Jews who wanted to emigrate to Palestine. Originally, the order gave Lutz permission to allow 8,000 to safely migrate out of Europe but he deliberately interpreted the order as one application per family rather than one application per family member. It was this willful misinterpretation that enabled almost 50,000 Jews to be placed under Swiss diplomatic protection. Additionally, Lutz issued each person a letter of protection, which stopped them from persecution by the German occupying forces. To the outsider, it may seem unlikely that the Germans of 1944 would have cared about a piece of paper, but Switzerland's unique diplomatic position and Germany's natural respect for official documents 
did offer a real defense. However, even with 50,000 Jews under Swiss protection, it still made up but a fraction of Budapest's Jewish population. The situation continued to worsen in October 1944, when the Arrow Cross Party, consisting of Hungarian Nazis who were little more than thugs, came to power. During this time, Lutz collaborated directly with Jewish resistance groups, including the Zionist youth. Many of these were housed in Lutz's office and deliberately forged more than 100,000 papers. Lutz also extended Swiss diplomatic protection to 76 buildings in Budapest, where Jews could be safely housed. But Lutz wasn't alone, he collaborated with various foreign diplomats, including the Swede Raoul Wallenberg and the International Committee of the Red Cross. On a side note, Lutz would also meet a Jew by the name of Magda Graus during the operation. She came to ask him for protection for herself and her daughter. Lutz would later marry this woman in 1949 as his second wife and adopt her daughter Agnes. One standout story of Lutz's heroism came on the day members of the Arrow Cross Party opened fire on a group of Jews. Lutz jumped into the river Danube to save a bleeding Jewish woman. After dragging her to shore, he berated the Hungarian officer in charge. Not daring to question a tall man quoting international law, Lutz took the woman back to his car and drove away. Again, this state of affairs would only last so long. In November 1944, Adolf Eichmann, one of the chief figures behind the final solution, ordered the forced march of all of Budapest's Jews into Austria. Lutz, alongside other diplomats, followed the marching columns towards Austria. Where possible, he would pull men, women and children out of the columns and issue them with diplomatic documents before returning them to Budapest. In this way, Lutz successfully saved over 62,000 Jews, around half of the entire Jewish population of Budapest, when the Red Army of the Soviet Union invaded Hungary in January 1945, Lutz and his wife were forced to flee back to Switzerland. Lutz would continue in his posting after the war, but the Swiss government believed he had overstepped his political mandate in saving the Jews. His actions would cost him any hope of serious career advancement, and his legacy would only be rehabilitated many years later. As well as being nominated multiple times for the Nobel Peace Prize, he was the first Swiss to be recognized as righteous among the nations by Israel. His daughter Agnes, who has done much to keep his legacy alive, said, I experienced the siege of Budapest myself when I was a six-year-old girl. I will never forget it and I am grateful that I survived. She would go on to publish many of the accounts of the survivors of Budapest in her project under Swiss protection, dubbed the Swiss Schindler, Lutz would never see his legacy fully recognized as he died in the Swiss capital in February 1975. So there we have it. If you have any comments, criticisms or corrections, let me know in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video.